Hi, welcome to House Church. Before we get started with the message today, I wanted to share about one of our foundational pillars, which is bills. Have you heard that the cross is not a pole? That's right. The cross is not a pole. It is vertical, but it also has a horizontal cross beam. And so as we build, we're going to focus on this horizontal piece, which is relationship with each other. And the vertical piece is relationship with God, our Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And so this building portion, this horizontal portion is so important, especially in this rest season as we're going to enter our season of rest in August. We want to focus on building with relationships, building with each other. So we take this time especially to slow down and to focus on relationships with each other. We do this by meeting outside of our homes because I know we meet each other at church and we can say hi and we have small talk, but nothing beats having people over your house to get to know them and to deepen your relationship with them. And so I encourage you in these next weeks to build upon our foundation and to invite people over, get to know them better and work on this horizontal relationship with each other. So let's prepare our hearts before we get into this message, and I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that it's a reminder not only to focus on our relationship with you, but also that we focus on our relationship with each other. We thank you, Jesus, for this season that we're in, that it's amazing and wonderful. We thank you for each other, and we thank you so much that you're with us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to pray through Psalm 23 for worship. Let's start by inviting the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being here. and We invite you to come, Lord. We ask that you come and dwell among us. Come and be with us. We make a space for you in our hearts and in our minds. And Lord, we clear all of the chatter from our head, anything that's distracting us from you, we just clear our mind and we focus on you and we invite you to come, Lord. Just invite him to come in your own space, in your own way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. We praise you. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. Lord, thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for providing all of our needs all of our food, all of our shelter. Thank you for being our guide throughout our life, for pointing us on the path so that we can take one step after another following you. Thank you that we don't need to want for anything because everything is in you. Verse two, he lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. Lord, thank you for letting us lie down in green pastures. Thank you for the green pastures to begin with. And Lord, we ask that you continue to lead us. Still our minds. Help us focus on you. Lord, thank you for leading us beside still and quiet waters. Thank you that the water isn't tumultuous and rough. Thank you that it's smooth. Verse 3, he refreshes and restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Lord, thank you for refreshing us. Thank you for restoring our soul, our very life. Thank you for leading us in the path of righteousness. Thank you for doing all of this for your name's sake. Thank you, Lord, for leading us righteously. Verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort and console me. Lord, thank you that even when we walk through challenges, when we walk through sunless valleys, when we're in the shadow and we feel like there's no hope, thank you that you walk beside us. And thank you that we will fear no evil when we're walking in the dark because we know that you're walking beside us. Thank you that you're with us all the time. Thank you that you protect us with your rod and use your staff to guide us. Thank you for your comfort and your correction. Thank you that you use your rod and your staff to nudge us in the right direction, Lord. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for consoling us. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Lord, thank you that you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. What an incredible thing to think that we can dine with our enemies and be 100% safe and secure in the shadow of your wing. Thank you that you anointed and refreshed our head with oil. Thank you that you are the refreshment for our lives. Thank you that our cup overflows because of you, Lord. Thank you for being all of our provision that we ever need. Thank you for filling our cups to overflowing. Help us to spread this out to other people. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell forever in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Lord, thank you that goodness and mercy and unfailing love follow us. You're so amazing, Lord, that you will give us goodness and mercy and love. Thank you that it's not here for just one moment, but Lord, thank you that it's here every day of our life, that your goodness and your mercy and your love are always there available for us. We're so grateful for you, Lord, for providing these things for us. Thank you that we get to dwell forever throughout all of our days in the house of the Lord and that your presence can be with us, God. Thank you most and foremost for your presence. Thank you for your presence among us and with us. Thank you that we get to dwell with you in the secret place. Just continue to thank the Lord and continue to praise him. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you for your body of believers. Thank you that we can come together to learn and to grow together. And thank you for being in our midst among us as we do this, Lord. We're so grateful for your presence. We're so grateful for your comfort and your love and your peace. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Hello, Collective. Uh, my name is Joe, for those of you who don't know me, and I'll be giving the message today. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about something that Pastor Joshua David said that I think a lot of people, it flew under the radar. I don't think a lot of people caught wind of it. He said that he doesn't understand why when we as believers want to seek the face of the Lord, we look to the heavens, we don't look into ourselves because we are the resting place of God. We are where he comes and he dwells. Uh, and this, I, I became obsessed with that, with that statement that he said, especially since it, this comes back to a, brings me back to a verse that Falake had me memorize. And it's Ephesians 2.22. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And I just love that because we as Christians, we always talk about how, you know, when you, when you accept the Lord into your heart, uh, when you accept Jesus, he, he dwells within you. And I just love that because when we come together as, as a body of Christ, we come together and we look. We don't look to the heavens to find to find Jesus or find the, the, find His presence. We should look to each other. We should see that 
what we are is we carry the authority that, 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 that Christ walked in. He says in Matthew uh, 28, he says, Any, uh, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And so now that the veil has been torn and he died on the cross and we've been given the, the helper, we've given the Holy Spirit, we now walk in that authority. We now carry on that. And I just, I think that we need to, we need to sit and we need to look at ourselves in the mirror and go, I am Christ to, to everyone who, who does not know him. So when I look for Christ, I need to look to myself that because he dwells within our hearts. We need to love who we are. We need to love the temple that he has created us to be. We need to love ourselves and, and acknowledge that, that he rests within us. So when, when we walk in it, when this path, it's not, it is not our, our deeds, it is not what we do that creates the presence of God around us. It is the presence of God within us that creates our Christian walk. And I, and I go on this big, long tangent to tell you all about this verse that I'm obsessed with right now, and that is 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, 9 through 10, and that is the story of Jabez. Uh, and Jabez, and if you've ever read Chronicles, you know that it is a long list of people of just so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so. But in it, there are two verses that are so powerful but so overlooked. Right in the middle, it is, it is 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain, Jabez called upon the uh, God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain and God granted what he asked. So in the middle of just the descendants of David and the descendants of Judah, the Lord took time to mention Jabez, to call upon the name of Jabez and to show that he was an honorable man. And I think it's very poignant that, that we look at Jabez because he was, he was cursed from his birth. His mother who bore him gave him the name that he caused her pain so that he had to walk with that the rest of his life, that he, is, he was not only, he was a burden. He had this curse laid upon him that, and a mother who makes their child feel like a burden has got to be the worst thing you could ever put on, your, on someone. Because I look at this, it is this man who was considered more honorable than his brothers, who walked out knowing that everyone who he met looked at him going, this man is, problems, is a problem. This man is a burden. So he then took that to the Lord and he said, this curse was laid upon me. How can I, how, how can I, how can I remedy this? How can I walk away from this curse that, that my mother put upon me? And he prayed this prayer that seems so simple, but is so powerful. He said, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm. In some translations, it says that you would keep me from evil so that I might not bring pain, uh, that, it would might, that it might not bring me pain. And in the New King James, it says, so that I will not be a burden. And I love that because it is a man who, who his entire life was told he was one thing. And he said, no, Lord, I will do so. I, I want you to expand my, my borders. He said, I want more authority. I want, I want you to, you want more responsibility for the life that I live. Because I am not a burden. I am, this curse that has been placed upon me from birth, it holds no power on me because I am a son of God. I am a son of Christ. That he, he wanted everyone he met to, know, to not know the pain that he felt. And that, that scares me because it says, expand my borders. Uh, we, we as Christians look at the borders that we are given in life. And I think so too often we are scared by the responsibilities that it comes with. We are scared to step out in our faith and, and speak about uh, you know, the Holy Spirit and our relationship with Christ, especially like in work and with friends. And we try not to be, we don't want to make things uncomfortable. But Jabez, in these, in these, in these short verse, in these short two verses, he said, Lord, I want more. I want, I want to be, I want to show everybody that there is, that there is peace and life and joy, that they will be free from harm. And he wanted more responsibility. And he looked in, and I think we who as Christians look at our lives and we, we need to step out in that, in that courage. We need to step out that because we are the temple. We are the holy consecrated ground that the Lord has now because there is no physical temple. We are the embodiment of that where we walk in the Holy Spirit. We we need to be Christ for people. We need to be the temple. And I look at the, the, the borders that I've been given, especially I work at the hospital. I, 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 I've traveled all over the world in the Navy and I've done everything. And I, I haven't been that. I haven't carried that responsibility. Uh, I, when I was in the Middle East, I did, not, I did not live up to that responsibility of being 
peace and life and Christ to people. I just, I cast it to the side. And I said, that's too much for me. That's too much for me to do. And, and I looked at the curses people put upon me, you know, when I was young and people, they called me, I was, <laughs> I was weak and I was short and I was annoying and I was loud and I was all these things that, uh, that make up who I am. And I am not weak. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I am boisterous. I won't deny that. But I've used that to break down borders, to, to help people become more comfortable in people when they're so scared to, to come into church and to be new. And they see somebody who's, who's open and willing to talk to them and excited to talk to them. It, it, it shows them that, okay, I can be comfortable here. I can, I can be, um, I can be welcomed. And so I've used that to my strength and my, and my abilities. But I think we as Christians so often try to hide our gifts and try to hide the Holy Spirit that is in us. And I think that we need to pray Jabez's prayer, that Lord expand my border. And we can do this and we can, we can take responsibility and the authority that, that Christ has given us into our daily lives. We can do it so easily, even without speaking, even without uh, the, the, the discomfort of going and talking to people at, at, at work and trying to, you know, uh, preach to them. I know it's very uncomfortable to just, hey, do you know Jesus? You want to talk to him? And it's just, it's the most awkward thing you could do. And in some cases, it might even get you fired. And, but but you can still take authority. You can still take authority and walk. And and, and one of the things that I like to do is that when I'm at the hospital and I need and I need a, I need a, a break and I need to just go for a walk, I'll prayer walk. I'll I'll just go, Lord, I just bless these steps. I bless the ground that you that I want. You know, and I go and I pray for, pray over the the cafeteria and the rooms and. And all the halls, and it just and to just take this, the presence of God that I carry with me, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus, and just let it permeate through the halls. Um, and it's just it takes a moment, and what it does is it realigns my heart to Him, even in the day, even the stress and the struggle of trying to to solve problems and get things back in, in order. And when I'm getting yelled at by by technicians and patients and things like that, when I take a moment. And I go, Lord, I love you, and I want you to bless this place. It realigns my heart with his, and so that we can become the temple and we can become the, com- the community and the church that he wanted so desperately, that, that church that was an ax in the upper room that people would come and they would just love, and, and they did it wherever they could be, wherever they, they, they could, could gather. And I think when we, when we take and we, and we take authority of the places where we, where we work and where we gather, it just expands the, the the love of Christ, and that's that. I, I, I truly believe that's how we take back this generation. Yes, we do it by preaching. Yes, we do it by going in the streets and 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 passing up food to the homeless. But we do it in in we do it by being bold where we are. We do it by by just loving people where we are in in life. We do it by prayer walking. We do it by just being bold and speaking to others about about the love that we have, the love of Christ that is that permeates in all of us. And so I would just I would just ask that anybody who listens, anybody who does this, look at your life and where are the borders of your authority? Where has the Lord placed you that you can say, you know what, Lord, I need I need to expand in these. I'm not going to be afraid. I am not going to be I'm not going to be uh, stagnant in my walk, and I will I will step out and I will love those around me. I will pr- I, and I truly feel a call to to prayer walk this the, the, everywhere we go to just take a moment and align ourselves with Christ and align ourselves with the love and just let his spirit take authority over our, bi- our places of business. So I would just encourage all of you that in your daily lives, as you're looking to the authority that you carry in this life and you're, you're scared or you don't know what, where, to lead, where to lead your family or what to do at work, just look to Jabez and be encouraged by his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you that we could gather together in these house churches. I thank you for the people that get together to love each other and honor you with their presence. Lord, honor you with food and honor you with just the glory of community. I thank you that we have this community and we have this nation that we can gather under and just speak your name and exonerate it with, with, with freedom. So Lord, as people step out in their daily lives, that they step out and they look at the authority and they look at the responsibility that they have in their jobs, in their families, in their friends, give them the courage to ask for more. Give them the courage to speak like Jabez did, that they will not look at the curses that have been placed upon them. They will not look at their lives that they that they are that they are uh, that they're not proud of, Lord, the parts of their lives that they are ashamed of. Let them look at it and know that 
they are you personified. That everything they do is set before your glory. Thank you for these amazing people, Lord. Thank you that you sit, that you are a God who desires to, to commune with us. That you are a God that desires to rest in us. Thank you, Lord. And I pray this all in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.